Hello? Hello? Okay. okay. Yeah, got it. This call is being recorded for training purposes. There we go. I'm just kidding. Okay. So, hello, Mr. Melvin Jackson. How are you? Good. How are you Good. doing? Good. I am well. I am well. So, I'm going to get on first, you personally. I am, this is Avian Amel, speaking with Mr. Melvin Jackson, Jr., actor, comedian, director, producer, writer, what else you got? Motivational speaker. <laughs> Motivational speaker, see? There you go, I left something out. <laughs> I left something out. Okay, I mentioned all the, all the professions you pretty much do is, there, you came in with comedy though, right? That was the first one? No, no, I came in managing artists first. I was a manager. What? Yeah. And obviously you don't do that no more, right? No, uh-uh. Uh, okay. Wow, managing artists. So what made you want to be an artist, pretty much? Well, I mean, I was doing some other stuff, you know, as well as modeling and, and, well, um, and it was just, uh, you know, a lot of times I was always, you know, submitting artists and, you know, pitching them and people always asking, well, what about you? What are you doing? And, um, you know, I, I was kind of didn't know that I wanted to pursue acting and the agency that I was with had me audition for a PSA and that was my first acting gig and I booked it and that was the, the, the acting bug. If I, oh, I wanted, I can really see myself doing this because I think in high school we had little things where we didn't, I don't wasn't any plays or anything like that. But uh, I, I I was kind of like, I started like really loving acting once I, I booked that, ro that role, and the rest was history from there. Wow, so you didn't even do comedy first, because for some reason, no. I just thought you did comedy before. I don't know. No, I, I didn't even think I would do comedy. It was like so so ter ter terrifying, um, but it was something that I always was intrigued with, because I had friends that did it, and um, I just, one day I said, you know, listen, let me go and see if I'm any good at it. If not, then I'll hang it up and keep it moving, and it became, it became, once I started doing it, it was fun, but it's still like, it's still a process. I've still got a lot of learning to do and, uh, you know, and to get everything in, in, intact. Um, where it's just like, I, I'm not, I'll, I want to be consistent. So. Yeah, I guess. So how long have you been doing the comedy part? Then? Comedy, I want to say four years, about four years now. Four years. Oh, okay. So it's not that fresh. You have quite a bit under your belt. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not having been doing it consistently like that. So it's yeah. more so, you know, because of acting and producing projects, it's kind of, you know, taking a lot of my time. So with comedy, you got to put a lot of time in it. And it's like, you know, most comedians, they're out there three, four times a week, if not every every day. And, that's you know, sometimes that, that, that's, a, that, that's a lot. That's more than I can, um, I guess, commit to right now. Yeah, um, yeah. So it, it's kind of like when people say, "Oh, a comedian," it's like you want me to, you know, ho you know, perform. And so I was like, "Okay, now I gotta constantly make sure that I'm ready, so that at any time somebody call me, want me to perform, I'm, I'm ready and not having to prepare." Oh, okay, I get it. Well, of the many professional hats that you wear, do you have a favorite? And why? Um, acting, acting is definitely my favorite because I get to play different characters, and it, you know, it's just something that I have fun doing. And um, producing is, is kind of a secondary thing because I, I like to bring people together, like-minded people together, and, um, you know, see something that you have a vision, and then you, you see it come to, together and you, and you come out with a product. I love, I love doing that, producing um, great quality projects. Okay. So, um, okay, you're mentioning producing. So are there any projects out there right now that people can see that you've produced? Yes, like I, I wrote and produced and co-directed uh, my own sitcom called "This Is My Life, So Why Are You Laughing?" And it's just a take on uh, of, of my, you know, my life as a, as a as a as a father, you know, with a with a son at the time who was 17 that would look, you know, older than me, and um, you know, just going through life and you know, the actor and 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 being in this business. Um, and so it kind of like took on like the Seinfeld, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Real Husband Hollywood type of feel where it's, it's me playing myself. Oh. Um, and then I had, like, my friends playing themselves, but they're, they're, their names are different. I mean, they're, they're playing different characters, but they're kind of pretty much playing how they would actually be in, in my life. My friends just happen to be actors, so it worked out. 
<laughs> that does work out. There you go. They, you didn't even have to audition anybody. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and so then that, and I have, uh, I have um, L.A. Temptation that I produced and, um, and directed. I'm also in that as well. And, and um, my, my, first, my first date, a.k.a. my crazy first date, um, that, that was created, and I um, co-directed that and produced it. So it's definitely about, you know, putting out projects that I can put myself in as well as my friends and, you know, other talented individuals. Oh, um, wow. That's really good. So, okay, so for, let's get on the acting again, back to the acting. You've done dramatic and comedic roles. Um, is there a, a certain one that you prefer over the other, or do you like doing them both or variety? I like comedy because I like p making people laugh, and you know, I, you, comedy you get to be a little bit more uh, freer. You, you know, you can kind of ad lib a little bit more than with drama. Um, you can, but it's like comedy. It's kind of like you you can kind of go off the cusp and um, just kind of be free for all. And I think that's what co doing stand up has helped me with my comedic timing and everything. So definitely love love doing comedy because I did drama for so long, people didn't didn't see me doing comedy. So when it's like I stepped out there and, and did it, it was like, oh, wow. Um, so it's, yeah, I definitely have fun doing comedy. Okay. And when, so whenever you get a role, is there a process you go through to portray the certain character that you have? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, you know, there's a thing where, you know, they have us kind of break down the character and, and find out um, what what is their thing. Like, what is something that that character does? Because sometimes we as actors will put ourselves in that character when it's like we're not supposed to put ourselves in it so much but kind of become that character, that person. So if that person does, you know, their actions say they do certain th things, then you have to inherit the things that that character does um, and but also make it your own. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's just, you know, you have to just figure out what's the, per what's the character's objective, how do you get there, how do you show that, and then kind of go from there. Is there a role that you played that is probably your favorite so far? Uh, my favorite so far, I want to probably say the Curtis Blow role because you know I'm playing, I'm portraying an icon, and I was in the New Edition, you know, movie. That's my favorite group, um, and so it was like that was by far, you know, one of the favorites because um, the set environment, everybody was was amazing. Chris Robinson and just the the feel that everybody was there because they loved. The, the, this project, it wasn't about money, it wasn't about ego, it was like, we just want to tell a great story. And so, play, portraying, being a part of their story and portraying Curtis Blow and I was able to embody it, that was like so much fun for me as an actor. Okay. As, as he mentioned, he just mentioned right now, he was in the new edition story, you know, the epic CAP movie that everyone's still watching to this day, just so you know. Yes. <laughs> Even in my household, everyone is still watching it. And, um, that my son, my son is like mimicking the songs, everything. So, um, did you get to meet Curtis Blow and and speak with him and ask him any questions or as? No, I didn't. Him? I didn't get to. No, I didn't get to speak to him be beforehand about the film. I had met him before a couple of years ago before the movie. Um, I knew about the movie, um, and I spoke to him afterwards. But I really didn't get any, you know, any insight um, from from him as far as, you know, how, how to do this, do that. So I kind of just went off of, um, you know, interviews that I, that I saw him um, conduct and as well as just videos like Crush Groove. I watched Crush Groove. I watched, you know, his videos and just kind of learn from there. And I, and I wasn't trying to, like, I guess, imitate him or anything like that. I just wanted to be, to be natural. So once I, I got into hair and makeup, I just, I embodied him once they put, you know, the sideburns on, and I was like, I was him, I wasn't Melvin Jackson Jr. anymore when you saw me, so that was a beautiful thing. When I went on set, everybody called me Curtis Blow, and I was like, I just answered to it, and I was like, yeah, you know, and just went from there. Yeah, that's, because that is, it's, it's, a lot of people don't realize that it's really hard to portray someone who's not only existed, but is still around. Right. <laughs> so, and you did that really well, and he not only portrayed Curtis Blow, but what a lot of people don't know, or may may actually know, who are hip hop fans, that he portrayed corrupt in the DPG 
movie, right? Yeah, DPG for Life. We haven't shot it yet. We did a, 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 a sizzle for it, but we haven't shot the actual film yet. So I'm definitely oh. you know looking forward to seeing that. Oh, so you guys haven't done the whole film yet? It's just a no, uh, uh-uh. uh. Just so what, a sizzle. What, just the what? We just did the sizzle. Just kind of get the the buzz going. Tell you know let people know it's coming. And oh so that wow! Was, that was really? Dad's idea. Yeah, Dad's idea to kind of you know get it out there because people were you know other people were trying to do similar movies, so they wanted to kind of just you know beat everybody beat it everybody else to the punch. Wow! So is this is this movie an extension from the Straight Outta Compton movie, or is it? A no, it's just, it's its own. Oh. It's, yeah, it's its own movie. Um, okay, and then with um, obviously getting corrupted, you I've I've interviewed corrupt and been around corrupt quite a few times. Did you are you are you going to or have you spoken to him or? Well, this is him well. This is the funny thing. Um, I used to always get. Um, was always sometimes mistaken for corrupt, you know, back in the days. And so when I finally got a chance to meet him, um, we were at Kevin Hart's uh, party, and I went up to him, I was like, man, I always people always tell me I look like you or whatever. He was like, that's a good thing. And so we joked and laughed. And um, and so then when I, uh, somebody was, who I think he auditioned for the Tupac movie, was like, hey, man, you need to try to get in there for that corrupt role because you'll be perfect or whatever. And I was like, I don't know if they were having corrupt in the movie. He was like, you should see if they... You know they're gonna have him in the, have him in the movie, so I started yeah. decided I was gonna do a campaign. So I put my picture of him corrupt and a picture of myself next next to each other, and I started a campaign. Oh, and I had really? other, yeah, oh. and I had other, I had other, I had other, yeah, I had other celebrities uh, um, sharing it for me, doing videos and everything for me, and uh, some, you know, my, I think it was my one of my buddies who was gonna be around corrupt that day or whatever so i think he showed i don't know if he showed it to corrupt and corrupt was like oh dang he do look like me um or whatever and you know told him my back my background and then next thing i know he uh he had told talked to dad and you know told him like yo he'd be good to play me and then dad hit me up uh through instagram and was like hey you know corrupt was like you know you'll be good to to you know play him i want you know i have on guy contact you and have you you know tell you what how to you know with the, uh, the audition and everything like that so i'll I re- did a reenactment of uh, an interview he did, and they was like, this is what we want you to do, and I did it, and I sent it to them, and they loved it, and they was like, they called me that Sunday, was like, you got the role, and we're going to be shooting something real soon, we'll be in touch with you, so. Wow. That was, that was two years ago. So what you did shoot, um, you got to meet everyone who's going to be in the movie uh, with you? Uh, yeah, I got to meet uh, Dre's son, um, Curtis Curtis Young, I got to meet Day Day, who's who's playing Tupac, and um, a couple other people that I'm still don't know who's playing um, Snoop yet. Um, but yeah, uh, okay. Lady Luck, I think she's she's gonna be playing uh, uh, Lady of Rage, but she wasn't there. But Lady of Rage came, and so it was just it was just really really good. And um, you know, when Snoop found out that I was playing him, he was like, "Yeah, that's my guy." You know, so Snoop, no, you know, I know Snoop, and it was just a beautiful situation. Yeah. Did you um? So you got to know a few of the people that are already going to be in it. So when, right. is it, when is it scheduled for taping? Um, I'm not sure yet. It's still oh. getting the script, getting the script together. Because you don't understand, like, like, okay. So I'm also a correspondent for WCNN, and then many people are anticipating this movie. Just so you know, there are a That's lot that. of people anticipating this movie. As, as soon as they heard. That there was gonna be a DPC movie. There were <laughs> people are just like, like in you know, and all like wondering who's gonna be in it and when is it gonna come out. All this stuff, like like searching for it and everything. I get people asking me, especially when I let them know I was gonna interview you and the ones wow. who knew that you were gonna be in it. They were like, "Did it come out? Do you have do you have the movie?" I go, "No, I don't. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it because I seriously thought it was already taped." And I'm like, right. I, I honestly was trying to look for it or anything, and I was trying to see if I could get a hold of Corrupt. Like, hey, can you give me the movie? <laughs> right. Yeah, and and that's the, and that's the thing. Like, people are so 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 many. They have so many fans, and you know, I didn't know how. I, I knew me. I knew how big they were back in the days, but I didn't know how. Like, it's West Coast, so it's like you know, people are really serious about that, and so that's why I was like, we're not trying to rush it because we know we understand how you know people are very much serious about this this um, them as a cult. And so, you know, people love it, uh, to cook, uh, Corrupt, and they're like, he's one of my favorite rappers, so it's like, I had a lot of homework to do, and I still got a lot of homework to do as far as, 
you know, learning all his, you know, me learning his songs, his, the history. And so, you know, I like, I know that he's from, you know, Philadelphia, where most people don't know that, you know, he's not really from the West Coast. But yeah. he came out here with about 15 or 16. And, um, he, you know, he just has a story, that, you know, his own story outside of rap that people don't know. Um, and so it's just important to always make sure that you tell a person's story outside of just entertainment, if, you know, when you're portraying somebody, but also just make sure you tell them, show them as a person. Yeah. So their, their life experiences help mold who they are. Right. That. Yeah. Is there anything that you would say that you've learned of corrupt that is similar to you, you or to what you did through? Um, that, I think, I mean, I don't know. I think he was, you know, that he was a single father. Like it was, a, you know, I was a single father when I was 17 and, you know, he, I think, I'm not sure. Um, I know his, his, his child's mother passed away who was, and Tina from the group of black, and so he became a single, a single father in that aspect. But uh, I just would say this, to, to, uh, the tenacity, you know, just having that willpower to continue to, you know, to, to work and work and, and get to the point to where, you know, you are doing what you love to do. Yeah. So is he, and him being your, one of your favorite um, rappers, you, said, you mentioned Snoop. Um, how did the legacy of Snoop Dogg in the dog town affect you growing up? Did you know, because it was, it was a movement. So right. it, it, he obviously became a favorite rapper, so. Well, he was, you know, until Corrupt, I would say somebody said Corrupt was their favorite rapper. I don't, no, he's not. I don't. Oh, yeah, he's not oh I'm yet. sorry. <laughs> I thought you said it yourself. Okay. Well, like I said, everybody's anticipating this movie, and uh, I, I'm sure that they can't wait to see you in it. You're, you are very talented. And if um, is if also another people may not know that he was from, he was in the wire, and um, everybody hates hates Chris. So you know you can look out for Melvin Jackson Jr. because this man is a busy man, actor, comedian, writer, director, producer, <laughs> and motivational speaker. Right? Yes. <laughs> and motivational speaker. Can you let everyone know? Um, where they can find you via social media, internet, or anything that you want them to go check out? Yes, they can check to find me at Melvin Jackson uh, Jr. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, MelvinJacksonJr.com. Um, yeah, just pretty much those are the, the places to, to find. And I have two last questions. Uh, I, I always ask like a lot of people, in your career, you know, sometimes people give advice and everything, and you've learned things. What would you say would, it would be your top three advice points to hand down to other people um, wanting to be in your situation or are in similar situations? I would definitely tell them, you know, do always tell people to do the research and to... to um, to definitely, hold on real quick. Yeah, to definitely just you know do the research, understand the the business that you're getting yourself into, and and um you know and and just continue to to stay focused. Sometimes we want to do something, but then we'll lose focus when it gets hard or where it seems like you know it's not going to work out. Um, because this this has been a 17 year process for me, and I'm still I'm still trying you know working to get to where I want to be at. So it does. Not a, it's not anything nice to so overnight, you know, or whatever you want to call it. it it's going to take a lot of patience. Oh, of hold, hold, hold on. You're getting cut off. You're getting cut off. Let's see, try to talk again. Uh, can, uh, yeah, you're getting cut off. I don't know why. Hold on. Can you hear me? Barely. Do it again. Yeah. What about now? Okay, I think that's better. Okay, go back to your last, your last point. Yeah, I was saying you know, how sometimes, you know, people will think things are going to be easy. You know, so this has been a seven-year process. Okay, let yeah. me let me hang up and call you right back. Maybe that'll okay. help. Okay, right. and then we'll do from the top three advice and all. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay, so I have... Last, my last few questions, if it's okay. Um, the 
top your top three you've been enacting for a while and um you know you've been through things that you know people have experienced people have given you advice are there any what would you say are your top three advice points that you can hand out to other people for um, one is definitely to to uh, believe in yourself and not give up um three or sorry two is always have a backup plan um, sometimes we will we'll just focus on just say being an actor and then have no backup plan to fall on you know i think you just have to have a plan definitely have a plan in place a foundation so that if one doesn't work out you still can fall back on something else um and then three just do the work and the research and um continue to just fight through it like sometimes it may get hard but you got to fight through it if you really want it because it may be that 20th year when you finally have your big break it just doesn't happen overnight and the last question of all I ask people is, you know, your acting is your favorite thing. Who would you say are your top three favorite actors, whether they've inspired you or you just like them or whatever, it was with actors, top three actors? Um, yeah. Tough. Okay. Definitely Denzel, um, Meryl Streep. Um, Eddie, Eddie Murphy definitely has been an inspiration um, for me. Wow. Uh, yeah, so. Those are talking really great choices, great choices. And thank you so much for taking time to speak to me. Thank you. <laughs> Telling me everything that you've been through and, and you're going through. And, um, again, people, this is Melvin Jackson Jr. Make sure you watch out for him because he's unstoppable. <laughs> thank you so much and thank you thank you very much for calling no problem so, have a good you know, one we had you too bye bye All right. uh -huh.